On today's episode of Decentering Men, I want you to meet D. D is a 31 year old single male with one child. And I met him while I'm walking down the street. So this guy starts texting me, Hey, this is D, hit me. You got any kids? I got one. Can I get a picture, sweetheart? Tony Gaskins talks to women about not giving them your picture. These guys have a big corn addiction. Giving a guy a picture can be detrimental in 2024 because social media, that picture could be all over the place. You could be going viral and trending in China and not even know it. Anyways, you don't want him doing nasty things with your picture. So no, I told this guy, actually, I didn't respond. So then pretty normal banter. He says, okay, that sounds awesome for real, for real. You be going out or you a homebody. And so I respond and I say, well, do you work? So he asked me for a picture again. He says, oh, okay. And yeah, a little, can I get a picture? So this is what I noticed the second time. He asked me twice and it was in the same sentence as if it was a deflection from what does he do for a living? So then I actually had to tell him like, hey, I said, LOL. No, I don't give pics out. You can see me though. And then he says, okay, cool. I have to see you when I get back. This is where the first dates get tricky and they go wrong really fast. So this conversation begins early in the morning at an appropriate hour. It ends around 11 p.m. where he's like, hey, I'm back in town. And I respond, I say, hey, I looked at the time and let's reschedule. That's a little late. Plus, I don't want to be rude to my roommates coming in and out of the house late at night. So, of course, I have to tell him that I have a bunch of roommates. I don't let people know all my business. And then I see where he's really pushing for another picture. Never mind the fact that he hassled me repeatedly to still go out and see him at midnight. And he gives me this long message about, oh, I just want to keep it real with you. I just want to party, blah, 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 blah. But I want to highlight on this main issue of asking me for my picture. So for the third time, so D's reply is, I guess if that's what you want, I say, okay. He said, can I at least get a good night picture, baby girl, please? I said, I don't have none. He says, take one for me, LOL. No response. So then I get the good morning, sweetheart text. I hit him back with the good morning, missed calls, etc. The modern dating experience for women is turning out to be a sham where guys are perpetrating and getting whatever they want without putting in any effort. They want everything to be digitized, quick and easy, at the access of their palm, because they want to just take care of themselves. So rather than get to know me in real life and look at me face to face, he just wants me to send him a picture so he can rub one off late at night. I'm not about to do that for you, guy. Come on now. And there's so much free porn on the internet, just imagine where his his mind is to think that, oh, this girl's going to send me a picture at midnight when I just turned him down twice earlier in the day. So a total of four times he asked me for my picture. And now I'm going to let, I'm going to give him a pass for everything else. Because like I said, I'm in a city where there's not a lot of options. People tell women to pick better. Let me tell you something. I need something better to pick from. It's so exhausting. I get so tired talking about this beating a dead horse. But in retrospect, women need to share these stories so that we can be on the same page that this is eerie behavior. This is not what women want. You know, the menosphere preaches about what men want, how men like the way women look and what they like and what they don't. They think everything is about getting their winky hard. But women have a preference too. And when I say no, it means no. That's how these guys end up with me too hashtags because they just don't know when to call it quits. What is the benefit of me sending you a picture? Why? You see me in real life. But because people's minds are so warped and weird, don't trust no man with your photo. About your dinner, can you at least like come back like one movie like my, at my place? I just kind of have to No, like my roommates are out for the week. I just, I don't know. I just think it's kind of late. Like, I don't know. Okay, yeah, but like, I'll drive you home. Your mom. Okay, well, listen, you're safe, okay? You're fine. You, you easily could have died tonight, okay? So, but you're, but you're safe right now. 
okay? So just, just take a couple deep breaths, just calm down, okay? Did he really? I, I heard. Oh yeah, he was, and you tackled like, him off. Like, 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 yeah. Go ahead, dump it. Yeah, <laughs> you're coming right off the back. Jeez. <laughs> your phone and your wallet are, in, or your phone and your ID are with him in his bag. And my 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 um the green vape. If anything, can I have that, please? Because that <laughs> will that calm you down. Okay. Let me let me get the vape. <laughs> okay. So you can calm down, okay? <laughs> I was right behind it. Uh, I came up to a chestnut. And I was coming up behind it. He looked at me and took off right through the red light. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Hey, I, I took her out of cups. Uh, she's freaking out. <laughs> yeah, no, she's, um, I can tell her. She just met this guy on Tinder two days ago. And she's literally like freaking the hell out. So I was like, just sit back here, just relax. She, she was, I guess, she told me that she was like yelling at him to stop, stop, stop. She thought she was going to die. She was going to die. He was driving like an absolute maniac. I'm not going to give you any life advice or anything, but I would probably say get rid of this guy because this isn't the first time he's done this. Did you start from the beginning? Yeah. Is what happened in your perspective? Um, I swiped right on Tinder. We talked. How long? That, that was, you said, you said a couple days ago? Technically, like two days. Yesterday to today. So technically, yeah. two days. Okay. What'd you guys go do today? We went to Clearwater Beach. Like, where at Clearwater Beach? What are you saying as he's going through traffic at 100 miles an hour, weaving in and out of cars? Anxiety attack. <laughs> so you're just freaking out at the time? Did you say anything to him? Or? Like, I'm just like, chill. He's like, slow down. Like, what did he say? Just, he didn't say nothing to you the whole time? He didn't say, we're gonna get away, he didn't say nothing? Do you know him to be somebody that commits a lot of crimes or anything I, like that? Or you just him? Yeah. And he didn't say anything to you at all that? He was wanted or you anything. Is he wanted? I don't know, is he? No, I don't think so. I hope not. <laughs> Did you notice that his his tag on his motorcycle was bent like that? Yes. Just to let you in on a secret for us, if you see a tag like that, it means they run from the cops. Okay. So that was the original reason why we stopped him. And then he ran the red light and then he took off. Because he does this all the time, I'm sure. So that's just a little information for you. If you see a tag like that, it's not Turn a good guy. Because you're going to get yourself in a position like this. All right, Taylor. So, you know what happened? What happened? Uh, I was driving like a jackass and got pulled over. So, did you, you, you saw us there back on, on North Myrtle? What did, what did you do at North Myrtle? Uh, accelerated. What's that? Uh, accelerated. What? Guys, I just finished my date. And I am so embarrassed. I'm not gonna cry in here. I'm not gonna cry. I'm sorry, guys. I just had to um, clean myself up a little bit. He came. He came. And so the whole thing is we went to this restaurant he wanted to go to. And it was a little too expensive, but I, I don't know. I asked my sister for money. So we went. I had this, like, I had this dress on. And I changed because I just I had this dress on and everything. And I had my hair out. Like, you know, guys, I cut it. But it wasn't like this. I had it parted a little bit. And so I went in and he was, like, looking around like, oh. Like, he was looking for somebody else. And I was like, okay. I'm like, hey, I'm Tia. And then he was like, Tia. I'm like, yeah, it's for me. From BLK. And then we, he was, like, looking confused. And he told me to sit down. So I sat down. I smiled. And he didn't smile back at me. And then he was like, I don't look like my pictures. I do look at my pictures. I don't Photoshop anything. I tell everything how it is. I, I'm going to insert out of the end of the video the picture I put in. And he was like, you know, just being so quiet through the meal and all that. He didn't even want to pay. I said, hey, I didn't bring my money with me. And then he eventually paid. And then now he cashed. He, he sent me a request to pay for the food. And that's not. I just don't understand. Why are men like this? Men are evil. When giving a low value man a chance, you end up regretting it because y'all are not equally yoked. Even when you lower your standards so that it's easy for this guy to get along on your team, you still end up salty. 
that's because you are attracting things that are not meant for you. We are carrying our parents' burdens, our generational traumas. And then, and so you saw that girl who went on a date and knew a guy in two days and was in his car. That's desperation. And we have a real common thing on TikTok where women are talking about how they were essayed when they were kids, assaulted when they were children. It's essay uh, awareness month. So everybody's coming clean and we can actually pinpoint, okay, why am I desperate? Why am I going through trauma? This last lady though, I, I'm not too sure because other people are responding saying she catfished him. She had a different picture and she showed up looking completely different. So I put that in there for humor. But in general, when you're attracting somebody and even the guy that I gave a chance to with the text messages, I'm doing that out of spite, out of, oh, let me get back at the person that I'm living with. Let me show that I have somebody too. I have no interest in this guy, but my mind will start playing tricks on me. Remember I said, oh, when women are, you know, there's not a lot to pick from. And so a married man will start to look good. A high value married man starts to look good to a desperate woman. And then you have a lot of women who will tag on to your man if he's decent, just because she can't find a decent man. It's not right, but it's reality. And that's why you see a lot of celebrities with multiple women. They could care less if you married. Man, they're just looking at you as a jackpot. And so that's why we are decentering people in our lives, not just men. Men are not evil. The devil is evil. And he corrupts men and women. But who has the most power on earth? Men. So therefore, men are going to be most evil. When you recognize the operating spirits that are in men and women, you start to change who you are and you discern who other people are and you are attracting the light that you are and you'll be able to cut off the people and stop making exceptions to the rule, cut off the toxic unequally yoked individuals and don't entertain them. But when you're steady trying to see the light and darkness, you're steady trying to give people credit where it's not due, you find yourself bankrupt in the end. Make sure you're practicing your decentering, practicing your discernment. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Talk to you in the next one.